My name is Danielle Smith. Um, I had the procedure. I actually work as a, the assistant ER director at the local hospital in my town. Um, I'm going to really quickly review my personal background, my um, struggles with getting it covered, bronchial thermoplasty, and then how I am today. So this picture here is actually me last year on Mother's Day. Of, you know, so I was uh, at that time on the ventilator after nine days of being in ICU on a BiPAP. Um, it was pretty rough. I'm 38 years old. I have three children, ages eight and then 11 and 11. I've been a nurse for 15 years. Before this episode, I was actually the ER director and was stepping down because I was too sick to really maintain it and was at work the day that, or the day before I went on um, into the hospital to get on, be placed on the ventilator. Um, I had had mild asthma all my life. It was really uneventful, you know, Used my inhaler a couple times a year, used it with exercise, used it when I mowed the lawn. Other than that, I was fine. Um, I was an avid runner, ran 35 miles a week every week, you know, pushing my two, two of my kids in a stroller. Um, an avid hiker, garden, loved to garden. Um, and then I had what we thought was a freak one time occurrence. I had a major asthma flare. Was admitted for that um, for about four days. Went home for a couple of days, came back for five days more, um, and that started this, the next five years of really difficult to control asthma. Um, the first 14 months, I had um, 10 ER visits with five hospitalizations in there. Um, the year before I had the bronchial thermoplasty, I was intubated twice in full respiratory failure. And it's a little disconcerting when you're getting intubated and you're awake because you're so sick and you're getting ready to code, that they don't have time to give you the medication. So remembering my intubations was a little frightening. During the last four or five years, I've been off work three different times for three to four months each time because of asthma flares. I was on um, home oxygen 24 hours a day. Um, I was doing NEBS almost continually. I mean, I would do them every time I had a flare, I would do one every hour. Um, on good days, I would get away with doing only four or five a day. Um, it got to the point where I no longer was able to really go outside. Um, I'd go outside even to check the mail and I'd have an asthma flare that would require hourly nebulizer treatments. And I was on every asthma medication out there except for one and I was allergic to that one. That's the only reason why. I was doubled up on two of them and still couldn't control my asthma. Um, I wasn't able to garden anymore. I wasn't able to do a lot of things. My daily life consisted of, for quite a while, of doing a neb, fixing dinner, doing a neb, getting my kids settled in for dinner, doing a neb. If I felt good enough to eat dinner because I was so short of breath, I would eat dinner. Most times I would do a neb and just lay down because I was so short of breath. It was really kind of awful. After my last intubation, I'd had enough. I'd heard about bronchial thermoplasty before, and my response to it was, nobody is going to mucky muck with my lungs. I'm not that bad. It's, it's going to go away. After my last intubation, I kind of came to that realization. It's not going away. I'm stuck with it for the rest of my life, and I've got to do something. So I talked to my physician about it and said, you know what, I don't want to go through, you know, finally getting stable enough so that they will do the procedure to only have a flare up and have it delayed again for three months. So we did a regimen to decrease my steroids. I stayed in what we called my bubble. We did everything to our house, you know, an air purifier, removed all curtains, carpets. We had no pets. My house was sterile. I mean, it was really kind of sad. And even I stayed in my home. I didn't work for the three months. I didn't do anything. So we started the um, approval process before I even was ready to have the procedure because I wanted it the day I was able to do it to go in and do it. So I had my doctor send in the request. And with the re initial request, because I knew that they were having some difficulty in Washington State to get it covered, I had them put in my last two hospitalizations, my, the bills for them, showing how much it was, which was well over $250,000. It was one sixty-five for one visit. And, 89 or 96 for the other visit 
and then also included all my follow-up appointments because I was having a minimum of every three weeks, usually every week or every other week. And then in addition to that, I had them put in the fact that my meds for the year, for the previous year, were $40,000. So I included with my initial request all of that just saying, you know, if, you approve, if I miss one hospitalization because of this, it pays for itself. Um, it was denied. It said it was experimental. Like, okay. So my doctor, in, it, with, with the denial, came and noted in it that my physician could talk to the um, physician that worked for the insurance company and have a peer-to-peer -peer review. That occurred. It was denied again. At that point, I went to my hospital, to the benefits coordinator there, and said, you know, can you do something? And as the director, I knew all of the, you know, big wigs at my hospital. I went to the CEO, can you do something? So they both wrote to the insurance company and my hospital started another appeal, or my physician started another appeal. Those were both denied. At that point, um, I got the CEO, because I'm part of a conglomerate of hospitals, so I got the CEO of the actual corporation of all of the hospitals to write one as far, and as well as the human resource director of all the hospitals to write one. Again, it was denied. The next one that was denied from my physician's office was denied saying that my asthma was inconsistent with severe asthma, which I found comical as I was on home oxygen, on every med for asthma, and um, had just trying to recover from being on, on the vent, which was pretty difficult. The final appeal that they um, did with the help of um, Boston Scientific, they helped you know, word the letter and whatnot. Um, they sent it in out of the blue. I'd already had all three procedures because at this point I decided it was better to have the procedures and sell my home so I could be alive than it was to have a home and be dead because that was kind of where I was. It was, you know, being intubated twice in six months was pretty brutal. So I sold my house, um, got the procedures done, and after I got the last one done a couple weeks later, they, the insurance company called and said, we'll cover two of the three. But I thought, oh, that's great, so why not the third? Um, so I called the insurance company and told them that it was like covering, you know, one of the broken legs to get fixed. You know, had two broken legs and you're only going to cover one to get fixed, that seems pretty odd. They um, said, well, you know, you can apply and get an appeal it. And I said, well, I've already gone through all the appeal process. You know, I've sold my home, I'm a young mom, I'm trying to work, you know, I want to be a protective member of society. They tried to disable me several times because I was so sick. I said, I want to work. I want to be a protective member of society. I have three young kids at home. I want to be able to raise them. If it, was, it was worth it to me to sell my home. So I did. And so she you know, paused in kind of that very thick silence for a few minutes and says, you know, let, me call, let me talk to my supervisor. He should be back in, within two hours, and I'll promise I'll call you in, at the two-hour mark. She called back and said, okay, we'll cover him. So after six months of trying to get it covered, selling my home, they finally covered him, and it was great, you know. Um, I um, underwent the procedures um, September 6th, the 28th, and the 10th of last year. Um, it was pretty frightening going into it. I had initially tried to get set up with a local university in my home or my state. Um, and they told me I was too sick of a patient, I was too high a risk, they wouldn't do it. I tried another one who'd been doing it a little bit longer. Um, no, they wouldn't do it. I said, okay, you know, I'm in Washington State, I live right next to Canada, Canada's been doing it, I'll try Canada. Canada, a couple hospitals said they wouldn't do it. My physician had been going undergoing the training, and he had heard about it because he had, one, he's a pulmonologist, but also his sister is a um, severe asthmatic and was getting ready to go undergo the procedures in Germany. He went through, got the training, and did mine, so I was the first patient in our community to have it done, and my doctor's first patient to do, which was a little frightening. Um, I was a high-risk patient, you know, according to all these other hospitals, and already looking at how severe my asthma had been, I went ahead and made funeral arrangements for myself. So two days before I had the procedure, I made funeral arrangements. I picked out caskets, I picked out flowers, I wrote letters to my children, and then I went into my procedure. Um, I went under general anesthesia for my procedure. It was, um, we had planned on, 
I was admitted, um, most patients go home the same day. I was admitted because of the severity of my asthma. Um, they admitted me. I went into it knowing that I could die. I could um, be on a vent for a few days because that's how my asthma flares were going. And um, I remember waking up from general anesthesia in the recovery room and seeing my pulmonologist walk in and he was grinning from ear to ear. I swear he was skipping, and this is a very stoic man. I've worked with him for years, you know, both as a nurse and then as a patient. Didn't show a whole lot of emotion ever, even in the most critical situations, he was very calm. He was grinning ear to ear, and I'm like, oh, I don't even know, have to ask how this went. You know, it was all good. Um, had the first one, had an asthma flare to be expected, ended up in the ER about five days later. Did the usual, you know, here's your nebs, here's some oxygen, here's some mag. Um, here's some steroids again, because I was on it for a week instead of the five days that normally were on it. It resolved pretty quickly, about two days of it. Um, and I had my procedure spaced fairly close together, a little bit closer than most people do. Um, had it after the next two. I didn't really have any problems and got to go home the same day. The only thing that I really, a couple things I really noticed from the procedure was the little asthma flare that I had afterwards. Um, I coughed incessantly. I sounded like the worst smoker ever. It was horrible, and I'd never smoked a day in my life, and it was horrible, but that resolved after about three weeks of that. Um, about three, four weeks after I um, had the procedure, there was a, there's been a pertussis outbreak in um, Washington State. I ended up with, they figured it was probably pertussis that I ended up with. Um, I missed a day and a half of work on, with pertussis. My previous hospitalizations, my intubations were from pollen counts in the air, from a mild cold, and here I had pertussis, which is, could be so severe, and I missed a day and a half of work, and I was like, whoo, that was, it was amazing. So my life today, um, I work as assistant director, I work full time, I think since my procedure I've missed um, three days total from work from asthma, um, versus three to four months each year almost, and then numerous times we've, during the year between those times. Um, my kids and my husband are ecstatic with the results. Um, my kids are young. I was a primary caregiver. I got married right before I went in to have my procedures. So my kids were young. I was a primary care caregiver, and they were terrified. Um, my oldest started wetting the bed out of the blue because he was so scared. If somebody else met them when they got home from school and they got off the bus and it wasn't me, they would cling to me the rest of the day because they were so afraid that I had been in the hospital again and I was going to be dead. So here my kids are just like, your mom's fine, this is so cool. I'm back to playing soccer with my kids. They're avid soccer players. I play soccer with them at least a couple of days a week. I walk, I walk four miles every evening with my husband. Um, I started running again. It's not pretty, but I can do it now. <laughs> I can run about a mile without taking a break now, and that's after walking four miles. Um, since the bronchial thermoplasty is last October, I've had one flare, um, which was so minor. I didn't end up in the ER. I ended up on a really low dose of steroids for me. Um, when I went home after my other hospitalizations, I went home on usually 100 to 120 milligrams of prednisone a day. When I went with this asthma flare, I was on 40, and I was on it for three weeks, and I was done. I missed at that time, I missed a total of a day and a half at work, and actually I worked from home. It was just more convenient to work from home. That way I could do my breathing treatments easily.